City strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red parts, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, welcome to a new project. Now, today's project is one I've actually been wanting to do for quite some time, but I've been waiting until I could get enough stretch fabric to make it work. And it is this one, it is a Vogue pattern. Here's the number, okay? And this pattern is a very, very full skirt, some interesting darts, a zipper, but it's to be made out of a stretch knit. And I believe that's just for the softness in the neck because honestly, everything else tells me that you can make it out of a woven except for the neck that looks, it looks like a mock turtleneck kind of thing. And I think that that would be a little uncomfortable, but as we get into it, we'll see if my theory is correct. Um, the fabric that I'm going to be using is this. It is a stretchy, uh, they call it glitter at the fabric store, but it's like a stretchy, crushed, velourish, velvet kind of shiny thing and that just seemed really festive and happy for this gray time of year um, my windows are actually fogged up <clears throat> excuse me but it's snowing again outside so i thought this would be a nice thing to do so i'm going to go ahead and get started cutting out the pattern and everything i have no idea how this is going to go but we'll just take it one step at a time all right so first thing i've got my pattern pieces just roughly cut and put over on the side i haven't really looked at them yet but the finish length, <coughs> excuse me, the finish length for the size I'm going to do, and I'm going to do 16, is 50 and a quarter inches. That is from the base of the neck to the finish length, okay, after hemming. So that's a little long for me. I held that up, and that is only like about four inches off the floor, which is kind of long. And this being a very heavy, stretchy, it might want to even grow while I'm wearing it. So I am going to shorten this by four inches along the bottom of the skirt. I just wanted to give you a heads up for that. And also to show you on the pattern envelope, they have this gauge on here, which is, they usually have a gauge like that if you're using a stretch knit. So what they want you to do is use the crosswise and lengthwise. They want you to be able to stretch both ways. Again, it's got a zipper, everything like that. I don't see the big deal in it. But just to humor, what I'm going to do is fold this. This is my selvage edge here. So if I'm holding it folded on this side, move it up away from the selvage here. Can I stretch it? Ooh, I cannot. Okay, so that's the lengthwise. That's going this way. But again, I don't want it to stretch this way because it's so heavy, it will grow. For me, the important thing is the crossways. So again, if this is the salvage, let me fold it this way. So I have a salvage here and the fold there. And I line up the edge of the fold this way for the crossways. Can I stretch it? Yes, I can. I can and have no problem. So even though they say that they're asking it to be a uh, four way stretch with 75% cross grain, to me, I'm fine. I am fine. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my pieces pulled together, but understanding I'm going to be shortening it by four inches. Okay, so I also wanted to show you these, the skirt piece is huge, and this must be why it was needing so much fabric. I had to get uh, about five and a half yards 
of fabric, 60 inch wide fabric. So yeah, five and basically five and a half yards. So it's huge. It's because it's kind of like a circle skirt, but the pattern pieces are so big you need to put them together. So you'll take your six and six A, tape those two pieces together, and your seven and seven A, tape those two pieces together, and then I'm gonna come back and shorten the bottom of those two after they've been taped together. Okay, so this is my piece number seven, which is the skirt back. And it's gonna be the same for the skirt front, where you have at the top of this bottom piece and the bottom of the top piece, there's this line of little zeros. You're gonna match those up. So I'm just gonna place it where I can see that that all overlaps here. And then I'm gonna tape this piece to this piece along that top edge so I can use it as a single, a single pattern piece. And now that I have them both taped together, I'm gonna to come back with my ruler. Remember, I'm cutting four inches off the bottom. So at a four inch uh, mark, I'm just gonna draw some lines all the way across because this is a curved edge and that'll give me a guideline so I can come back and just with scissors cut that whole bottom edge off. All right, so I've got my two skirt pieces cut out and I just realized why they want a four-way stretch, kind of. I just still don't think it's necessary, but if you see, these pieces are so big, you can't cut them the normal way. Usually a skirt, like if these two are the selvages, the skirt is like the top is here and the bottom's here, okay? But they want you to do it widthwise. And so on my particular fabric, I have a lot of stretch this way, okay? But not so much this way. So at the heaviest part of my skirt, I am gonna be dealing with all of that stretch. So what I'm thinking is um, the way I'll just deal with that is once I have it all made before I hem it, I'm just gonna let it rest on my dress form overnight kind of like you do if something's cut on the bias so that it can kind of settle. And I think I'll be okay, but I just wanted to point that out that they're having you cut these out length or uh, width-wise on your fabric pieces. All right, so I've got the skirt pieces cut out. I'm working my way through my pattern, and this is the bodice. You can see it's got this dart that comes up like bottom side at a diagonal this way. It's also got this neck dart here. Um, now, the measurement that they show for the final measurement or the final width of this bodice at the full bust is 41 inches, which is fine. But just letting you know, there's not a whole lot of ease in this pattern. And I think that's by design. Plus, you know, it is a stretch, so that's good. But <clears throat> because I have a dart that's being pointed at a bust and I need to do a low bust adjustment, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And I don't always do this, but when there's a dart pointing at a spot, it just makes it painfully obvious if there's a problem. And you know, my body has dealt with gravity long enough that that would be a problem. So basically the pattern itself is good. It's just the, the center fullest part of my boob is an inch lower usually than patterns want. I haven't actually measured this one, but in general, that's how it is, and so that's what I'm going with. Um, so I need to move this little bullseye here, which is where they want the apex, the biggest part of your, your boob to be. So I need to move that down an inch, but I don't wanna change the length of this. I don't wanna change that, so I'm gonna make some adjustments here. So first thing I'm doing is lining up my pattern on my grid behind me here so that I have my green line going along that. Now I'm going to cut, I'm gonna draw a line, let me see here. Get my little ruler lined up here. I need to draw a line here, which is going parallel to my grain line on this side of that apex and also just above it let me see here like this okay what i need to do now is um cut this here and cut this here 
Okay, so I have this part cut and this part up to this point. I put a piece of tape there to reinforce it so I don't go further because I want this bottom to stay where it is. So now I need to take this piece and shorten it by one inch. So if I take make a fold that is half an inch, half an inch and half an inch is one inch, so that's what I'm going to call it. So I can just go like that so that this side is still going to be over here. Okay. I'm going to tape this together here. Tape this together here. Now I have a gap here. I need to fill that in. So I'm just going to get a scrap tissue paper from my bin here. And oh my gosh, that a strong piece of tissue paper. Okay, so that's about the right size. I'm just going to slip it behind here. Okay, and tape it on so I have that little gap filled in. And now I just need to make some adjustments with my lines here. So this outside edge is my size 16. So I match up the top corner here to this bottom corner here and make that line. So that's going to be the new cutting line for that side. This dot here is the apex for my size. So I'm going to take a line from this corner here, which is the bottom of it to that. this pen is a little too wide. Okay, so this pen should work a little bit better. So I'm going to draw this line here. And these are going to be my new dart lines. We can't really see that, can we? Let me make it darker. Okay, so that's that leg there. I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to draw a line from the center of this point to its corresponding end point over here. Okay, so that's the new dart leg for this side. Everything else stays the same and that should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this out. Now, because I changed the dart placement, I also have to change the cutting line. <clears throat> so this is the cutting line for size 16, and which, which is basically going to be 5 eighths of an inch from the, there we go. The cutting line is 5 eighths of an inch in from the sewing line for that dart. Let me get a different color pencil. <clears throat> so the red's going to be my cutting line. Just ignore the squeaking here. So that's the cutting line for that side. If you can see, I'm going to do the same thing where I line up my ruler at 5 eighths of an inch here. And redraw that cutting line. And where those two come together, Right here, that's where I cut. So when it's time to cut this thing out, and yes, there are a lot of lines there, I know. I'm going to cut it up here and back down that way. Okay, like that. And when I sew it, I'm going to sew along these. That's where I'm going to mark it. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I shouldn't have to change anything on the back because I don't have boobs on my back. So this will be good. I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting out the pattern pieces. Okay, so I want to show you this sleeve. Now, the sleeve, even in the photo on the pattern, is narrow on top. And then it's like super full and pleated on the bottom, okay? <clears throat> but when I measure straight across here, the finished width of my fabric is my exact arm width. You know, I have thick upper arms. And so I could make this work since I'm using a stretch knit. I could, 
but I don't want it to be tight. I want it to have some ease up there so it doesn't look like it's too small, you know? So I am going to modify this piece too. You see the bullseye? The, okay, look at the dot up here for the shoulder placement dot. And I'm going to draw a line from that, which is about a quarter inch this side of my grain line marking. And just draw a line straight down all the way at that point. Um, and it's going to be going through a pleat, but that's okay because the pleat can disguise that I'm making an alteration. Oopsie, move my ruler. Okay, so I've got this going this way. I'm going to need to cut that, but before I do it, where my bullseye is here, I am also going to be drawing a line across, making sure that I am, I have this perpendicular to that, so this is a right angle, okay? And I'm going to draw a line straight across here. Now what I'm going to do is cut up this line I drew from top to bottom and I'm going to stop at my little circle up here for my size. Okay. Usually they want you to make a little clip on this side to make a hinge. Okay, so it's, oops, that did not, I guess it did. Okay, so it's just joined by a little piece of fabric there. And I'm also going to be doing the same thing, cutting across here to about 5 eighths inch from this side and over here to about 5 eighths inch from the side. Okay, so now what I want is I want to add at least one inch in here. Um, an inch and a half would be even better for me. So just to be able to show it, I'm placing this so that this cut edge is along this grain line on my table. And I want this to be an inch and a half out, okay? But I don't want the bottom to be that extreme out there. Let me move you over a bit. So keeping this part out here at an inch and a half, you know, where I need my width to be, I'm going to kind of angle this bottom back in, right? So usually I put my little tracing paper patch underneath. But I don't want to get into that right now, so I'm just going to put a little one on top here and put some tape on to hold it in place. before I do anything else. Okay, so that part is held in place. It's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna retape this bottom down here. Okay, so it's back together. Now I need to deal with all this up here. So, just laying the shoulder cap parts on top. Something's gonna overlap and that's what it's going to be. Put a piece of tape here. And a piece of tape here. That way I've got the same size sleeve cap so it should fit into my garment the same, into my bodice pieces and everything, but I've got my extra width here. And um, I think that that's going to work a lot better for me. It shouldn't give so much extra width up here that it changes the thought process of the designer, but I think that that'll fit my arm better. Okay, welcome to the next day. And I am doing a lot of stuff downstairs, but while things are in the oven and things are in barns and everything, I'm going to come up here and just kind of do stuff. So the first thing I need to do is work on my front bodice piece. And so there is a lot of stuff to mark here. So like usual, I'm going to use my leather hole punch to punch out the circles. So I always stick my piece of leather underneath there first so I do not cut my fabric but I need to mark 
all of the little circles for these darts. And remember, I created a new dart here, so I'll be still using the same um, circle that's up here, but I'm going to be, uh, once I have that marked, I will be drawing my lines, and you'll see how that turns out. So let me go ahead and get all these marked. And for my notches, I am going to be clipping them. Now, this is a knit fabric. Get a scrap from over here. If you can see the back. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you can see it, but the back is a knit. Come on, focus. Does not want to focus today. It's not going to unravel. It might want to curl, but it's not going to unravel. And because of that, I am not going to be surging around my pieces before I sew them. I might not even surge them at all. We'll see when it gets closer. Ah, I got to get downstairs again. So uh, let me go ahead and mark this and then I will show you what it looks like. Now on this dart up here, they have you mark the very tip of this oval thing and these two up here, but you kind of miss the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and mark, making sure I'm following my right lines here, a couple circles there so that I have a guide to go by because otherwise it's just going to look like when you have those two dots and this one, just a straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and punch these two out and mark those also. Okay, so I've got my bodice pieces marked. You can see there's a dart here, this oval thing there. I'm using my blue heat erasable pen on the wrong side of my fabric. And so now I'm going to go ahead and pen these and stitch them. I'm going to be putting a brand new nine, size nine needle in my machine just to make sure that nothing snags on this because um, that could be troublesome. And this is a stretch, but I'm going to try to treat it like it's not, if that makes any sense. I'm not going to be working a lot of ease into it because of the nature of the design um, with the back zipper and everything. I just don't think it needs it. So anyhow, what I am going to be doing though, hang on a second, this thing is giving me fits already. Um, is I am going to be using a special thread. And this is one I bought a little while ago. Um, I got it at Waywalk. And it's a thread that has some stretch built into it. Not a lot, just a little bit. So let me go get it and I'll show you. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. This, I, it is not the right color. Yes, it's black, but I only bought white and black because those are standards. And if it's a seam that's not like a top stitch seam and everything, and it's not going to be under pressure, I think it'll be fine. But so say this is two inches of the thread here. <clears throat> Sorry, if this is two inches of the thread here, if I anchor this part down, I can pull it out maybe another half an inch. So it's not like it's an elastic thread, but it's enough that if something is under pressure because of a stretch, it shouldn't pop. I got this to be able to also do the crotch seam in pants. Okay, because sometimes it is it is fairly heavy duty, and um, but when there's a, a, that back crotch seam and you're moving around a whole lot, that seems to want to pop more than anything else. So I'm hoping that this will do a good job there. If you look here on the label, if you go to the waywalk.com website, and this is Saba 100, and it is one of their um, A-M-A-N-N uh, P-E-S P-E-S core spun. So, but just look up for their stretch thread. And that's what this is. They, it comes in all different colors. So anyway, all that aside, this will be the first time I use it. So we'll see how it goes. But I did draw my line so that when I sew it, I'm going to be able to see those. So I always start at the outside edge and work my way in. And this neck dart here, I also need to pin it. So I'm going to stick my pin down one dot and up the other here. Pull those together, pinch it up here at the point. 
Okay, and so then I can go ahead and pin this flat. And I need to go load up a bobbin, change my needle on my machine, and stitch these darts. Okay, so starting on this big dart down here at the bottom, start at the outside edge, back up one, and just sewing, making sure I'm at 5 eighths of an inch from the edge here. So when I get up to the top, I'm going to take a stitch off the edge, hit my back up, and then come tip my fabric out a little bit and come in. And what that should do is make my, my back stitches a little bit more on this part than out here. All right, so I just didn't feel like hand tying the ends of my darts today. I don't think it needs it because this fabric is, um, you know, shimmery enough that I think it would camouflage anything there. So now I need to go ahead and go press these open. Okay, so I've got it over here at my ironing board and I'm going to angle my fabric off the edge here because that way the dart will make it want to lay flat because there's a natural curve here. So on this, I'm only pressing it up part way first where it's cut open. And then I'm going to get my little metal chopstick or use, you know, whatever you have that looks heat resistant. And I'm going to stick that in the end along the stitching line, put my iron on top and then pull it out. Add a little bit of steam and that way it's going to flatten it more evenly, you know. But anyway, this is what that dart looks like on the outside. I think that's fine. The dart up here at the neck, it gets pressed up. So let me get this wrinkle out there first, but I'm just going to come along, press it up. And while I'm doing this, it is erasing all of those little marks that I made earlier. So that's a good thing at this point. So now I have my two fronts, the darts are put in, and now I need to put them together and sew them up the center. All right, so I just brought the other side over here while I have it. And this stuff, you know, it's, it is what it is and it wants to grab itself. So I'm probably using a little more pins than I usually do, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this down here at 5 eighths of an inch and then press this seam allowance open. Okay, so back over here at my table, um, I'm going to be diverting from the instructions here for a minute because the next thing they're wanting you to do is sew the back bodice to the front bodice pieces and they're going to want you to do the skirt and everything like that and then put the zipper in last. I don't like to do that. I want to put my zipper in the back when it's flat. Okay, so I'm not going to be following their sequence. And the pattern calls for a 26 inch zipper. I just looked through my stash. I do not have anything close to a 26 inch zipper. But what I want to show you is this is the back piece. All right. I have two options here. I have a standard 22 inch zipper which would fit like that, or they call for an invisible zipper. The closest invisible zipper I have is 20 inch, all right, which is a lot shorter. I'm going to go with my standard one because the length is important because this is a fitted bodice, all right? So if I have it ending here, that's not gonna be enough room, even if the bodice is open all the way, um, at this point for me to be able to pull it over my head. I do think though with this one because I'm going to have it to be open down to here and that is after the waist and it's going to be very full, I can make that work. Now one other option I could do is I could lower my zipper here, have it end here so I have plenty of room down there close this up and just put a little button or hook or something up there. And that actually sounds pretty appetizing to me right now, just because I don't want to put a lot of strain here when I'm pulling it up. So that's what I think I'm going to do. But before I even get to that stage, 
actually I could I could do that with the invisible zipper and make it work hmm I might do that too but before I even get to that stage what I'm going to be doing is um, putting the skirt putting the pockets onto the skirt pieces putting the front skirt onto the front bodice piece the back skirt onto the back bodice pieces and just do all of those separately so they can all come together as one unit so what I need to do is set this aside and get my front skirt pieces and my and my pocket pieces out okay so this is my front skirt piece this side is just cut on a fold so I just rolled it up these skirts are huge um, so I need to clip my notches this one actually is not that important. This one that's the single notch is a lot more important. That is for pocket placement. Now these circles here, I'm actually going to mark those after I have the pocket sewed on because that's going to help me with the stitching around it. But I'm going to be ironing my pocket and I don't want to mark it, iron off my marks and then mark it again. So I have clipped the notch on my pocket just the same that's what's going to match up over here all right so i got everything unpinned the pattern put away so finding that notch that i clipped my gosh where are you little notch i don't even know i think it did not go through for some reason okay so here is my notch now i need to take that and match it up with my pocket the little notch that I clipped on my pocket okay and pin this on and I'm going to do the same thing for the other side and let's see here they only want you to use a quarter inch seam allowance which is good that way it will be hidden on the inside when the final seams are done so after I have this pinned and go over and stitch this at a quarter inch seam allowance the same on the other side okay so now I have my pockets sewn on I'm just going to hold off on pressing them or anything for right now while I run some gathering stitches so I am going to be doing two rows of gathering stitches and I am going to pull that thread out of my machine and put my heavy duty um, really really heavy duty thread in my bobbin and a standard thread on top for my gathering stitches just because putting a stretchable thread in there for right now just seems like it might cause trouble so let me switch my bobbin and run two rows the first one's going to be at about a half inch seam allowance the second one you know quarter to three eighths inch seam allowance so I'll have two solid rows and the uh, outer edge here I'm going to probably start it about you know three quarters of an inch in and go to the same point on the other side alrighty so I've got my two rows of stitches in there the bobbin is the white one that's my heavy duty thread and that's the one I'll be pulling and I sewed my top thread in matching just to make sure in case something you know shows it's not going to be obvious so this pen marks my center front on my skirt so I'm just going to match that up with my front seam here on my bodice match up the outer edges and start pulling and gathering all of this there's quite a bit to gather so between it being cut as a circle skirt and gathered this is going to be super full so this is my center front this is my side seam I have it pinned halfway you know halfway here halfway here and I'm just going to start pulling both threads and moving those gathers down now when I'm gathering something that's you know this cumbersome I really really want to make sure I use two rows of stitches but also this isn't actually that bad but if you're gathering something that's really really long like huge amounts of ruffles or something sometimes after you make a nice pull it's good to go ahead and tie a knot that way your threads don't get out of whack before you do your next one so that is about it once I get these in even if they're slightly too tight like that then I can go ahead and just adjust them and pin them down and then 
um, I'll be ready to stitch them on. All right, so I've got it all pinned on. Now I'm going to go over to my um, sewing machine and sew it on. And I want to sew it with this side up so I can keep an eye on making sure everything behaves itself as I try to feed it through. Okay, I just put my stretch E uh, bobbin back into the bottom here and I have my red thread still on top and I'm just going to get this set up 5 eighths of an inch in from the edge here and I'm going to go nice and slow because every couple inches I want to look underneath and make sure everything is nice and flat back there like I want it to but also as I'm sewing straighten all of this out and pull it down and uh, there's something going on with my machine here. It's like the power's not connecting or something. All right, so I'm looking at it this way. I can make sure that my gathering threads won't be visible. Hmm. The machine is acting funny. Oops, I forgot to change my stitch length. Make sure you change your stitch length back to a standard size. Back up a hair. Okay. And that way, you know, every couple of pins, I can make sure the back side is right. Get everything straightened out up here. This is a, a lot of fabric. Just take your time and get it nice and settled so nothing is pulling particularly one way or the other. Okay, so now, now I'm good for a few inches. I can move it down and I am a little bit concerned about my machine. I may need to replace some motor or cord or something, so I'll have to look into that. But let's see just if I can coax her through this. Thankfully, I have a lot of backup machines I can use if I need to get some work done. So now that it's all sewed on on this side, it looks nice and straight. This side also nice and straight, so when I open it up, that is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead, pin my front onto my dress form. We can see what it looks like while I start working on the back pieces. All right, well, I have a problem here. Can you see it? Yeah. Crazy. So, um... When I was cutting all of this out, I cut out the skirts first because they were huge, you know, and it looks like it's going to be nice and everything. But then I had to cut the bodice pieces out around where the skirt had been cut out. And apparently I cut this out with one going up and one going down. If you can look in that center front, one side looks like a totally different shade than the other. That is because I cut one piece out upside down on the fabric. Um, unfortunately, I was assuming that since this is a very crushed, abstract kind of fabric, that this would disguise any nap issues, but apparently it doesn't. It doesn't. Now, at this point, I'm going to walk away from it and think about it. I do have enough fabric. I can cut out another one of these redo the darts, sew the skirt onto it, and I can fix it. Um, I'm just really busy right at this moment, so I have to decide if I want to invest that time in it or not. So I just wanted to show you, yeah, I screwed that up, but it's fixable. It's just one of those things. Okay, so really quick, I just cut out another piece. I haven't done anything yet, but just placing it over, you can see. Yes, it does make a huge difference. So yes, I am going to be replacing this side. So you don't need to see all this. I'm just going to be making my darts the same. I will unpick this part, you know, take this off, put the new piece on, and the next time you see it, it'll look just like this, but better. Okay, so I got the fronts 
fixed and um, I want to do the backs now and so the back does not have any darts it's a very very simple pattern here which is nice after all those darts on the front so what I need to do is basically mirror what I did on the front where I sew the pockets onto the side of my skirt on the back and it's going to be exactly the same where I cut the little notch on the back uh, where the pocket placement is, you know, between the two dots and put my pocket on there, right sides together, sew it at a quarter inch seam allowance on both. There's two different back pieces, okay? It's open here, remember where the zipper goes. And so after I put the pockets on the back, then I'm gonna be running with my super thread in my bobbin, um, the two rows of gathering stitches along the top of each of my back pieces and gathering them, attaching them to these, and sewing it on just like I did with the front, so I don't really wanna duplicate all of that on camera for you. So the next time you see these, they will have a gathered skirt attached to each side. I've got one of my back pieces pinned on here, and I wanted to point out on the uh, center back where the zipper's gonna go, you don't put any gathers um, an inch and a half in. You leave that completely flat because you're going to need all of that flatness for when you're putting your zipper in. So after an inch and a half, then go ahead and have it gathered. And then again, I'm leaving my seam allowance over on this side flat. So now I have this and I can go ahead and sew it on. Well, I'm over here at my machine and I think my motor just died. Just checked everything is still connected there's the foot pedal all the wires are still connected i press it and nothing it sounded like there was something going wrong the last seam that i sewed and i think it died i mean this motor has been on here since the early 1980s so it's about time so i think what i'm going to do is use one of my backup machines to finish this dress oh, it looks like i might need to order a new motor so anyhow i'm going to take it off here let the meister rest turn on the 15 and keep on going so this is my one of my backup machines this is my singer 15 the one i usually use my buttonholer on she is a 1953 model, so not terribly old, but I took my buttonholer off, my straight stitch uh, foot on and everything, so we're good to go. The only thing that's lacking in this machine is it doesn't have a light. I have a little magnetized light I can pop on, but I think I'm gonna try to just whiz through this. If it gets too dark and I can't see, well, I'll pop it on, but this is her. So glad to have so many that I can use. Okay, so now that I have my back bodice sewed onto my skirts, I need to put my zipper in. And this is what that seam looks like that I just did over on my backup machine. So the dark colored is that slightly stretchy thread. And I think it's gonna hold it really well. Seems to be really strong. So that is good because I don't believe there's any top stitching on this. So it's just that one seam holding my big skirt on. So now remember my zipper and I am going to use the invisible zipper like the instructions want you to. Um, but my invisible zipper that I have is much shorter than the one the pattern calls for. It's actually six inches shorter. So to make this work, what I'm going to be doing is actually starting it lower. This up here, you can kind of see, this is going to be like a turtle neck looking kind of thing here. And so right about here is actually the base of the neck. So I'm going to actually have my zipper start here and I'll just put a pretty little button or something up here. You know, I don't think that that's a big issue. Um, but I'm going to have my zipper start here and go down. And by doing that, it's going to be able to go past my waistline enough that I'll get a big enough opening that I can pull it over my shoulders and everything when I'm going to pull it on. So, let me go ahead and get my basting tape and I'll be right back. 
All right, so I got my little roll of basting tape. I'm going to put one of the sides aside for a moment. And if you've watched me for any length of time, you know that using this instead of pins is my preferred method for putting on zippers. And I can just tell you right now, this is pretty thick um, down here where the gathers are. Because this fabric, because it's a, a nappy knit, it's thick, plus it's a lot of gathers, so there's quite a bit of stuff going on here, but I think it'll be pretty. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and make a mark up here where I want my zipper to start. And at this point, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So if this is the top of my shoulder, I think right about here would be a good spot for my zipper stop to end. So when it's fully zipped, that's the top, okay? So if, well, actually the first thing I need to do before I even get started with this is go over to my ironing board and iron it. Open up your invisible zipper and there's coils, kind of unroll the coils a little bit and iron them as flat as I can and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my coils um, ironed out so they're fairly open. See how this is just wants to lay open now. That's good. That way I'll be able to get a closer stitch. Now, the first thing I'm going to need to do is put my tape onto my zipper. So my tape is actually going to be going on the right side because when I sew this, I sew it with my right side to right side like this. And then it gets flipped. So I'm going to flip this over and on the right side of my zipper, on each of the things here, I'm going to put a piece of tape double-sided water-soluble basting tape. Do love this stuff. I'm going to start it down here. It has a paper backing. So I put it on, press it on real well, and then when it's time to put on a particular side, I pull the paper backing off of that side. So let me go ahead and get this stuck on both sides of my tape. All right, so on the right side, the zipper pull is over here, got my tapes on. Now I'm going to turn my zipper right side down, line up this edge over here, and I'm going to, at the top of my zipper, there's this little metal stopper. I want that to be um, just below the little line that I just drew here. And I'm going to be lining up the edge of the tape of my zipper with the edge of my fabric. It's going to give me a slightly smaller seam allowance, probably closer to like a half inch instead of five eighths, but I think that's going to be fine. So I'm just going to very carefully start with a little straight pin to pull off this other side of the paper because it can be tricky. Okay, and just start to pull this down all the way. All right, so I've got the paper pulled off that whole side there. I'm going to turn it face down and line up the outside edge of my zipper with where the stopper is, matching up to where that line I drew is. And just slowly bring it down and press it down and it, that tape's just gonna hold it in place here while I go to sew it on. So let me get it stuck on here. Now, remember I do not have the skirt sewn together down below. I will do that after I put my zipper on. Down here where my seam is, where my um, skirt is joining on, I wanna make sure that I get that on nice and straight. down so my zipper is only 20 inches and they called for a 26 inch zipper but by moving it down about three inches to start um, I still I'm gonna have the end of my zipper a couple inches below the waistline and hopefully that's gonna give me enough of an opening there because my skirt is so wide at that point that I'll be able to pull it on it won't be a huge you know step into it kind of opening but it should be good enough so now 
I just realized I don't think I have an invisible zipper foot for a low shank machine. Let me go see what I can do with this. So this is my situation. My Meister, my standard machine, is a high shank machine, which means that the distance from down here to where the screw is, is taller than a low shank machine, which is what a, an average household machine is. So you can see down here, this is a low shank machine. So where the screw attaches is way down here compared to up here. So this, my usual zipper, invisible zipper foot will not work. So I am going to improvise using a standard zipper foot instead of an invisible zipper foot. I might not be able to get exactly as close as I would with this one, but it'll be fine. So what I'll be doing is, you know, obviously attaching this to my machine, but running it down the edge here and just stitching it as close as I can to these coils here. Whereas this one, it's nice because where the slots are, it kind of wants to uncoil those coils and hold them out of the way while you stitch. So it's a little bit easier, but this will be just fine. I'm gonna pop this on machine and go ahead and stitch that on. Okay, so I've got this side sewn on with my stretching but dark colored thread. You know, it's gonna be fine and that'll work out. Now, um, I could only get up to this point. I actually tried to, you know, leave my needle down, pull up my presser foot and move the zipper up and it just caused issues. So that did not work, but just like a standard invisible zipper foot, I just get up to this point because if I was to zip up this zipper to try to be able to work my way down, it's going to recoil everything I've ironed and that'll be a mistake. So that's fine that the thread can only go down to that point. We will deal with that when we sew the seam down here. And I'm just going to get my zipper matched up at the top down here. And I'm gonna draw a little line down here. You know, I have it matched up as best I can with the stoppers in the bottom where um, that seam is, okay? So that I wanna, actually I need to, uh, no, no, that's okay. Because I want to, when I'm putting this tape onto the other side of my dress, make sure that this little line lines up with the seam line. Okay, so what I need to do now is put down the second side of my dress, right here. And right here, this is the side that gets the zipper. And up here, I'm going to transfer over that mark where my zipper starts, which is going to be just kind of folding it so I can see it right there. That way they will be at the same height. So now I need to, on this side, remove the paper from this side of my uh, zipper tape. Okay, so I have the paper pulled off this side now. And so with this piece just lying on top, because it's easier this way, the first thing I'm going to do is match up this little line that I drew with that seam line down here. And when I do it, when I do sew it, I want to make sure that the seam allowances underneath there are pressed up this way. Okay, so now I have that down nice and secure. I can try to even this out a little bit here. Uncurl my edge and place my zipper down here the rest of the way. Oops. And I think that that's going to be pretty good there. Then I'm going to this pin out of the way. Find my mark that I made up here where I want my top to end up. Put my little stopper right below that mark. And then holding it at this point and this point, kind of stretching it out 
so I can average everything out and just kind of press my zipper tape down along the edge of my fabric. Got a wrinkle there I need to work out. Um, so it will be fairly even. Okay, let me flip it over just to make sure everything looks good underneath. And yeah, I think that looks good. So again, with my regular standard zipper foot, I'm going to sew as close as I can to these coils right here. See how I'm starting my stitching right here so that when it comes time to do what I'm gonna do right here, I can at that point just fold it out, okay? So anyhow, I'm gonna do that same thing starting here and stitch it all the way down. All right, so ready to go ahead and zip it up for the first time. At this point, who knows how it's going to work, but it's been one of those days. Sometimes the first time zipping it can be tricky. It looks like some of my fabric wants to get in the way, but not bad, not bad. Okay, so here is my zipper, which looks like a seam, which is perfect, that's what we want. My seam line here is matching up, which is good. Again, that's a good thing. You know, up at the top here, it's open. That's okay, we planned that. So now down here, I'm gonna need to sew the bottom of this seam closed, my skirt seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over so I can match up my bottom edge here. Just put a few pins along the way. even it out. See how it kind of wants to roll up there? Just match it all up, pin it up, and I will be right back. All right, so I've got it all pinned together here. Now I'm going to want to start to stitch as close as I can to this point here and come down. Welcome to the next day. So back over here on my Singer 15, and um, I still have my zipper foot on, just the standard, you know, off to one side zipper foot. And actually that's gonna be helpful because when you go to sew this, if you have a standard zipper foot or a standard foot presser foot on, it can be really hard to get up to that point. It doesn't wanna focus, okay? It can be hard to get up there because of the zipper bottom here. But with the standard zipper foot still on there, I can just get it pushed over to the side here, pretty close to where I need it to be, drop the foot. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sew it all the way down with the zipper foot on there. All right, so I have just gone over to my ironing board and lightly pressed this seam allowance open here. Okay, so it goes open all the way to my zipper. Everything is good. So from the outside, this is my center back seam here. I think it's gonna be really nice. Um, no puckers, nothing like that. So yeah, worked out well just using my plain zipper foot. And again, I do have this gap here. But now that this is in, I can go ahead and sew my front bodice and skirt to this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay my back piece down and I'm just gonna do one side at a time here. Let me go get my front piece and I'll show you how I match it up. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is match up. Well, first thing I'm gonna do is clip some of these gathering threads. I do not need those laying there. Get my pins over here and I'm gonna match up where this uh, seam is on both the front and the back making sure my seam allowances are both going up on both the front and the back. It's gonna make it kind of thick there, but that's the way it needs to be. And then matching up this little underarm corner here, popping it out. Okay, and then the next important piece is gonna be this pocket down here. So let me 
scoot everything down. Now you're going to want the seam allowances for this pocket to be out. Okay, and then just fold the pocket on top. I should have pressed this. Hang on one second. I'm going to take a quick intermission, take this whole thing to my ironing board, and press these pockets just so that they'll be nice and flat before I go to the next step. And the way I'm going to do it is so that the seam allowance is, you know, together. We're not pressing those open. It's just a small quarter inch seam allowance. Pulling this and just pressing this flat like that. And I'm going to do it for both back pockets and both front pockets. Okay, so now dealing with this fabric, I am not pressing it on the right side. If I need to, what I am doing is hovering above it, about an inch above it, or less, about half an inch, throwing some steam on it, and then come back with my little wooden clapper block and hold that down until it cools down, dries out. The, the wood will absorb some of that moisture that I put into there with the steam, and that'll hold it. But I can iron it on the inside. So, so let's say on this side over here, I'm gonna pull this pocket out, make sure the seam allowance is pressed out towards the pocket. And on the wrong side, I can lightly press it, okay? I just, excuse me for excessive steam there. Um, I just don't want to do that on the right side. I don't want to risk interfering with the little crushed, shiny look of the whole thing. So that's how I'm dealing with it. If it's the right side, hover and press with my block. Wrong side, go ahead and lightly press with steam. That will dry out. And that is it. All right, so back over here, now that I have pressed my seam allowances towards my pockets, I'm just going to very carefully match up where the pocket begins here. And remember, I did not transfer over those circles on my pocket. I will be doing that after I get this mark, this pin together here. So I'm not actually pinning the outside of my pocket yet. I'll pin below it first and then let the outside fall where it will. Okay, so then there's the bottom and the top of the pocket are anchored together. I'm just gonna kind of lightly let these become friends here. If they don't match up exactly, don't worry about it. Absolutely nobody is going to see that. The main thing is that this seam here is the same on both the front and the back. And because my fabric is so thick, I can feel through there that it is. So if these points here match up and this matches up, just kind of smooth the rest, put some pins around it. So that part is done. I'm actually going to be putting one more pin here, just in the very middle, just to hold this point so that the two sides don't want to come apart in there while I pin this lower part down here. So I'm just going to go ahead and match this up, pin it down to the bottom, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now time for marking raise you up here. So they did not actually mark the dots on the, po the pocket. I'm going to transfer them onto the pocket because it'll be less cumbersome moving it around than this one. So I'm just matching up this notch here. Draw a circle there where that dot is and a circle here where that dot is. Okay, now I can put this big old piece away and just deal with this one here. I'm going to place it here. Now, these circles should be at 5, 8, 7 inch. Our seam here was at a quarter inch. So these circles are going to be towards the skirt side of that, okay? So if I lay this down here, I think my pockets stretched a little bit out of shape, but that's okay. The main thing I want this piece for is the height, not really the depth, because I can figure out my own height, I mean my own depth. So from the top of the pocket, 
coming down, I see this is the circle right here. So I'm just going to draw a little line there from the bottom of the pocket coming up. Here is the from the bottom of the pocket coming up. Okay, lining up this edge here. Here's my circle, so I'm gonna draw a line right there. All right. So the way it's gonna work is at, make sure everything is flat underneath here, at five eighths of an inch. You know, I'm gonna be starting at the top, coming all the way down here through this seam at five eighths all the way to where this little intersection is, okay? So you can see it's in about three eighths of an inch from this one, okay? Because a quarter plus three eighths is five eighths. So I'm gonna sew it all the way to there. For my pocket, I need to sew across here. So there's a couple ways to do it. Usually I go down and then I come back up and then start here you know, I need to trim some of this so I can make sure that I do not go off the side. So I'll trim, you know, my edge to make sure that these two are even before I start stitching. And then stitch it at 5 eighths of an inch all the way around the pocket. So it'll be coming out like right about here. Okay. So then here's my starting point. Why aren't you focusing here? Okay, so then here is my starting point for going down. So then I will, you know, do a little back stitch to anchor it here, making sure my seam allowances are pressed towards my pocket. Come up here and at 5 eighths of an inch in, which is right about here, I'm going to start my stitching line again going down and just continue all the way down. Let me go ahead and trim this edge off the pocket here so they are even at this point. And then I will sew one side, get it all totally settled, and then flip my garment over and pin the other side. Okay, so back over here at my ironing board. And uh, the way that I actually sewed this is just when I got to a point, I just backed it up, went around backed it up and came down. But now what I need to do is press this. So I want my pocket to always go forward and it's easy to see what's the front because, well, I don't know if you can see, there is a dart on the front right here. So I know this is the front, mm -hmm. okay? So I can press this open up to right underneath the pocket and then I'm gonna clip just the back seam allowance most of the way towards the seam you know, about an eighth of an inch away. So I can press this open to that point, and then the rest of it is going towards the pocket, towards the front, down here. And then up here above it, the same thing, where I'm gonna clip this back seam allowance just above that pocket to within about an eighth of an inch of the seam, which is gonna allow me to open the seam allowance up here, nice and flat. I'm just gonna quickly give it a little bit of a press there. I'm not pressing this very hard, just mostly to, to train it to want to stay open. And it, for a finicky fabric, it's being very agreeable, so that's nice. So what this looks like from the other side, from the right side, it's always the test, isn't it? Okay, so this is my front now because I flipped it over and my pocket is nicely hidden. The seam is nice and flat, so that's good. So here's my little pocket opening, but it blends really well. So I am happy with that. Also up here where my seam line matches, I mean, it might be like a 16th of an inch off, but not much at all. So I'm happy with that too. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side to close this whole dress up. And finally, now that the sides are all put together, I'm gonna do the shoulders, which is you know, opposite of what the instructions say. But that's okay, get it all done. So I'm um, just matching up. There's notches, there is ends. Match those up, stitch it at 5 eighths of an inch, and press these seam allowances open on both sides. 
Okay, so before I actually put my dress on my dress form to see how it looks, I want to deal with the neck facings. And I need to interface these. So I'm going to be using my typical, there you go, extremely lightweight fusible interfacing. And uh, let me go ahead and cut out two of each of these and I'll be right back. All right, so I just very carefully fused my extremely lightweight interfacing to the back of my pieces. These are the front ones. They're a little bit deeper. And the first thing I need to do is sew the center fronts together at 5 8 7 inch and press this seam allowance open. All right, so now that my front, center front is sewed together, I need to do my side seams. So I'm gonna the side that has the funky little squared off edge, that is the side seam. And it does, is it gonna match up? Uh, yes it is, yes it is, interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew these side seams at 5 8 of an inch and press them open. Okay, so um, the instructions at this point do not say to finish the bottom edge of this. And um, I think what they want you to do is turn it under and stitch it that way. But it's not going to show. And at this point, um, I don't want to serge it because this is very lazy of me. Um, I haven't surged anything yet on this dress. I didn't plan on it. And I still have white thread on it and don't feel like changing it to dark colored thread just for this. So I am just going to come in here and since this is a knit and it has interfacing fused to it, I feel very secure about it. I am just going to pink the bottom edge just to give it a somewhat nicer look to it and call that good. So I'm just going to do that along the whole bottom edge. All right, so I've got my dress here turned right side out. I'm going to unzip it and flip it over so I'm looking at the front here. Just like that. And I should be able, I remember I left my sides open because I started my zipper down. I'm going to be dealing with that in a moment. But I'm just going to go ahead and match up all of these seams up here at the top, at the shoulder seams, and also matching up these edges with the edge of my interfacing. Okay, so I've got it all pinned up on here and I'm just going to sew it straight across at 5 8 of an inch. Not doing the sides yet, just going straight across the top. All right, so I've got it all stitched together now, and now I need to understitch it. So, always do the understitching on the private side, and the facing is the private side. And so I'm going to be moving the seam allowances, both of the seam allowances, underneath the facing. Oops, looks like this one got bent in a little bit. You know what? I am not going to worry about that. I'm going to clip this so it'll be flat here and up here. It is fairly thick where all of this is here, but I feel pretty good that the under, under stitching is going to flatten that out a bit. So other than that one, I've got all my seam allowances sewn open, which is good. So opening it up this way, moving the seam allowance towards the facing. Okay, I think I'm going to actually sew it looking at it this way, just so I can make sure that I don't get anything out of whack. So um, the stitches I'm going to be doing are going to be running right around here. Oopsie. I'm going to be running stitches right about here, you know, about eighth or sixteenth of an inch from my stitching line in over the facing, over all the seam allowances, um, all the way across the top of my facing. So I am still using my slightly stretchy thread, which of course does not match exactly, but since this is going to be on the inside, I'm not going to worry about it. So now I can just turn my facing under. It's going to make this edge want to curve under. Let's see if we can get it to focus. It's going to make it want to curve under so that none of the stitching is going to be visible on the outside and give it a nice rolled top. So that's what I want. Uh, let me flip this over here. 
So now what I need to do is deal with these edges here. So I am just going to cut out actually first some of this bulk here because that is a lot of bulk. Let me do that on both sides over here. Just most of this seam allowance over here on the edge. Okay. Get that put away. So now remember I didn't sew the top of my zipper. Let me get you a little closer here. So here's my zipper. I'm gonna cut this loose thread. Folding that edge over, folding this down, and tucking that top of that zipper tape in just a bit to keep it out of the way. It's gonna be like this. So let me put a couple pins here, and I am just gonna, I could machine stitch this, but I think I'm just going to uh, stitch it by hand invisibly just to close up this little edge here. Okay, so from the outside, it's gonna look nice and clean. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, so I've got my matching thread here, and I am just going to stitch it up so that hopefully my stitches won't be too visible and it's gonna hold itself together nicely all the way up. So I'm just coming in, catching from the middle, catching one side, coming back from the middle, catching the other side. Nothing real fancy, ends up looking like a feather. And uh, I'm gonna tie it off at the top and sew up the other side just the same way. So once the edges are sewn together, I'm going to be matching up where the seam allowance is and just stitching through the seam allowance of the bodice to the facing just to hold that down. So I'm gonna be sewing it down, you know, by needle and thread here at the center front and on the other shoulder. Alrighty, so this is what she looks like right now. The darts that we put in up here make it wanna have that wrinkly look, but those are actually the darts giving it shape. And you can see that the inner facing is doing a really nice job with this. And um, another good thing is I can judge basically how easy it is for me to put on by how it is to put it on the dress form. And it was no problem pulling it over the dress form. So I should have no problem getting dressed. So let me flip it around to the back here. Um, what I'm gonna need to do is put a little button closure up here at the top, all right? But I think it's beautiful. It looks almost Mandarin from the back up there. So I am going to use, let's see if we can focus. I have this one button, one old rhinestone looking button. It's a vintage one. And I think that that's gonna be really pretty you know, up here as a closure, but it's kind of dirty. So I'm gonna run downstairs, get a cup of coffee, run this through my Sonic jewelry cleaner just to try to get some of the nasties out of it. And I am back. So I will be doing some miscellaneous things here before we get to the um, sleeves. And the first thing is this piece, this pattern wants you to put a stay at the waist and it gives you a piece to use as a guide for your stay. So I am going to be cutting mine out of this inch wide or seven eighths inch wide grosgrain ribbon that I had left over from that Gucci jacket a while back. So first I'm just gonna trim my ribbon, the size or the length of my stay pattern piece and track down a lighter. Hang on a second. Okay, and then I'm just gonna singe the edges to keep it from wanting to unravel. I think this edge is already. And I will trim the one on the spool too. We are good. Okay, so there are markings on the pattern piece that I need to transfer over onto my ribbon. So let me just Lay this out here. Um, 
mine is the largest size here, so I'm actually going to go punch the circles that correspond to my size. So I've got one here, which is supposed to be center back. I've got one here, which is going to go with the side seam. It doesn't have a circle at center front, but I'm going to mark one anyway, because why not? This square here, it's a square because it's a landmark, and that is the other side seam, and then center back. So, now that I have those marked, just laying it on here, and with my heat erasable pen, I can draw them in. It's going to keep it from stretching out of shape while you're wearing it. It gives the waistline something to anchor to because this is a very heavy skirt. So, you know, that's a good thing. All right, so now I have my circles. I'm just going to go ahead and draw lines straight through them. That's going to make it easier for me to see. Okay, so knowing that I constructed this differently than what they did in their instructions. It's going to make it a little bit trickier at the side seams, but it's still going to be doable. So I am pinning my stay on, match up the side seams, the dot um, that's going closer to the center back. It's going to be stopping before you get to the edge. That's on purpose. That's okay. But when we're sewing it on, we stop sewing right here. So I'm marking matching that. Actually, I matched the side seam and just pinned this until it came to that circle. Then I'm going to match up the front dot with the front seam. And what I'm doing is putting the bottom of my ribbon just above, maybe a sixteenth of an inch above that stitching line, um, just so it won't interfere with anything. But it's going to basically cover up all of the seam allowance here. So let me just go ahead and finish pinning this on. Okay, so it's all pinned on. So what I'm going to do is go over to my sewing machine and uh, folding it out this way so it's just the seam allowance here, the gathered and the bodice, starting at this dot, which is a few inches from the edge, I am going to be using a straight stitch and just sewing straight across, going all the way through my ribbon and both layers of fabric here. And I'm going to get as far as I can to my side seam. I won't be able to go all the way through because of the way I constructed it. So once I get to the point I can't go any further because I'll run into that, I'll just, you know, lock it in and then start again on the other side, go all the way through to this other side seam, and then follow through again the third time from this side seam to my dot which is right here. Okay so I've done my first little part and I'm st stitching it about a quarter inch up from the bottom edge of my ribbon. So I'm at my side seam here. I'm just going to kind of push all of this down out of the way and tuck it under my presser foot here. And I am using the side of my presser foot as my guide. Get some things organized and make sure I don't have anything underneath that ribbon doesn't want to be there. Oopsie. Hang on a sec. It's kind of thick down there. bit, pull out my pin, get things organized. Okay. And I am still using my stretchy-ish thread. So this will be a very good test to see how it holds up on this garment. I love this little 15 machine. The one thing that is a little odd about it is it has a pot motor. Um, it does not use a belt. It's kind of cumbersome because, you know, huge skirts and everything, huge bulk, but this will work. 
Okay, but anyway, this machine has a pot motor, and that means it doesn't have a belt. The motor's kind of just geared straight into the workings of the machine. And so um, you have to sometimes, depending on how the gear is, you'll have to actually turn it with your hand to get it started. Which, you know, isn't the best when you're using all of your fingers to hold something still. But if that's the worst of it, then that's not bad. So hang on, I'm almost across the front. And that's basically what I'm doing. And, and you know, I just wanted to show you handling the fabric because there is a lot in this thick. And it's just really taking your time, doing a little bit, making sure it's good underneath, stitching it. Okay, so back over here at my table now. And so the ribbon, with the exception of the side seams, is sewn on. Okay, so you can see that. And if you look on the outside, none of that is visible because it's all in the seam allowance, which is good. So what I'm actually going to do is come back with a needle and thread, just, you know, do some hand stitching just to keep this attached up here in the seam allowance area. Um, most of the, the bulk of the stress of it's gonna be contained all the way around it. Okay, so I am actually just going to run a little row of back stitches across here, but I'm gonna got my hand inside here underneath so I can make sure that I am not gonna go all the way through and have them visible on the outside. But there is so much bulk here between the gathers and all of these seam allowances and everything that I think that we're gonna be just fine. But that's gonna hold it super secure. Okay, so now I get to the end here. I'm just gonna tighten it up and tie off my knot by going one back stitch, two back stitches, and one completely sideways underneath it to anchor it in. And there you go. So I'm gonna do this on the other side at the other side seam too. Okay, so at this point, I need to put my hooks and eyes onto my stay. And I just looked and it says we need to turn them under 3 8 an inch and then turn them under again for the center back. And I'm thinking I should have gathered a little bit more over here when I was sewing this on that I probably have this dot not placed exactly. That's my bad because my ends of my ribbons are not going to overlap very much. So I'm probably not going to be turning it under as much. Now you do want your stay to be slightly smaller than the outside um, edge because the whole purpose of this is that this ribbon is going to take the brunt of any strain so that these stitches won't. Okay. So what I'm going to do is fold under a quarter inch and then another quarter inch. Okay, so instead of three eighths and three eighths. So close, but not 100%. So I'm gonna pin that. I'm folding them underneath towards the inside edge here. I'm gonna do the same here. Okay, so I'm gonna fold those like that. I'm actually gonna run over to my sewing machine and run a row of straight stitching across those folds. It's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna keep it folded, but also it's gonna give me a little bit of reinforcement because I'm gonna be sewing some little hooks and eyes on here. And um, I think that that'll help it be a little bit stronger. So I might go back and forth a couple times with my stitching on both of these edges where my folds are. I actually decided just so that I can adjust it so it's gonna look right. I am picking out a few inches of um, where I sewed this ribbon on in the back. And what that hopefully will do, we will see, but what that hopefully will do is allow me to go ahead and sew my hooks on. And then once my hooks are on, I can see then where 
the skirt will naturally want to work that extra ease in so I don't have anything awkward on the outside. So with all that being said, I opened it up a couple inches and um, let me get just standard little hooks and eyes. I'm going to put the hooks on one side, the eyes on the other side. Just sew those on by hand. All right, so I've got my hooks and eyes sewn onto my stay. You know, not real pretty, but it will do. And I've got it open still a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is put this dress on my dress form inside out so I can see what this is going to look like. Okay, so I have it inside out. I need, I zipped it up. It's not zipped up all the way, but a couple inches so I can see what it's gonna look like. So now, you know, I have it unpicked from this point to this point. The dots are actually here and here. So you can see I was a little off center with those. But now that I have it on here and I have this buckled, all right, and it's okay that it's a little bit off center. That's actually good because I would rather not have the hooks right behind the zipper. That's like metal behind metal and everything. So I am just going to put a little pin here. Um, this looks like about three inches. I want to do about the same over here, about three inches. So I'm going to put a pin over here. And I don't know if my dots were off, if the pattern was off, if it was just me and my placement, but we're gonna fix it. So now I have this pinned where it needs to be according to how it's gonna hang and everything. So I can restitch from this point over and from this point over. And again, this center part will remain loose so that I can come back in here and unhook it. Come on, unhook it and then unzip it. But you can see that that's going to keep it cinched in nicely. So that's kind of cool. So anyhow, let me go ahead and make these stitches once again on my sewing machine. And then the stay part should be done. Okay, so before I put this whole part away, I need to tackle my button. So I've got my pretty little button here all cleaned up. I'm just going to put it, sew it about three quarter, three eighths of an inch down from the edge, fairly close to the edge. And then I'm gonna make a little um, thread chain on this side just to loop around it. So first thing, actually first thing is tie a knot in my thread and get my thimble. Heavens, what am I even thinking? So for the loop, I'm just gonna use regular thread, but I'm doubling it. So I'm putting two, th two tails through the eye of my needle. And then I'm gonna tie those down here to the loop below. So I'm basically going to be making it out of four strands of thread at a time. And let me go ahead and wax these so that they will all behave nicely together. So if I zip my dress up, here is my fancy button. I'm going to want to start my a loop right about here. So that will be the top of it. And I'm gonna put the bottom of my loop right about here. So that'll be right underneath that button, okay? So I can open this up again here. And get my little thread. And I am going to be sewing this about an eighth of an inch in from the side. Now I'm ready to start it. So I'm just gonna catch a couple threads down here so I have a big loop here. And just catch with my, put my finger and thumb through that loop and pull it, okay? And just keep doing this. Come on. never wants to do right on the camera. I'm going to pull this other pin out because it's in my way, but I can just remember it's, you know, almost a quarter inch down from the top. So that's not difficult to remember. And as I do this over and over, it's kind of like just, you know, making a chain. But I can tell when I'm getting close to that point. And that button is pretty thick. 
So I'm going to have it just a little bit loose so I can pull it over the button, but I don't want it loose enough that it's going to fall off because that gets annoying. All right, let's see what this is. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so it's just a little chain there. So once it's the length I want, I can take my needle, pull it through that last loop, and my little chain is made. And now I can just sew that end of the thread back in. I'll take a few stitches just to hold it in place really well. And then I can tie it off down here underneath. Just my standard two back stitches in a sideways. And now our little button and chain loop is finished. Let's see how it's gonna look. So if I zip this up, pull my little chain over, my hope is that it'll kind of center the button in that opening. Hoping it's not too tight. The edges of this button have all of this metal on it, which is kind of snaggy, but that's okay. All right, so yeah, that's pretty good. It does look like it's trying to center it with that little zipper pull down. But I think that that's really pretty there. So yay, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and get the sleeves out. Okay, so um, the sleeve has a cuff and a continuous lap. And I still have my inner facing on my table from when I did my neck facing. So I'm going to go ahead and interface this cuff really quick. Uh, so I can put this away and get it out of my way. And even though it's a cuff and you would think it needs to be stiff, I'm going to use my same very lightweight interfacing. And I held off making that choice until after I had this on here, on my neck. And I wanted to see how it was going to hold up on this fabric. And I think it does give enough body to give it shape and hold it, you know, the way I would want my cuff to be held. So instead of going with a heavier or a crisper one, I'm going to use the same very, 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 very lightweight interfacing. Cut two of these out and fuse them on. Okay, so I've got my sleeve piece out here. It got kind of wrinkled, but there is a lot to mark on here. So the first thing is there's two dots up here and they are going to want us to run two rows of e-stitching between those two. And I will, but looking at their diagram and looking at the photo, it doesn't look like there should be any puckers or gathers visible. It's more just for ease. But since my fabric is so, so thick, even though it's just a little bit of ease, I am going to run those stitches. So, so I just made a decision that instead of marking these dots with a pin, I'm just putting notches for them. That way it's less to deal with and I only have to cut it on one side. So I'm notching this, notching this, and all three of those. But all this down here I do need to mark. Okay, so I have my fabric right side up, right underneath here. And so what I'm going to do is mark all of my pleats on the right side of my fabric. And this part here, this is the line for the continuous lap. So I'm just marking that dot where I need to be able to cut up to. And down here, I'm going to mark the center slash line. Let's see if you can get in here. There's a center slash line and then it looks like about a quarter inch out on each side. There's a stitching line, okay? So I'm marking those three points down here. But the rest of all of these pleats, I am going to mark them through my little holes. I'll tell you one more thing I'm going to do just to make sure I do not put my continuous lap opening on the wrong side of my sleeve. I am going to go ahead and slash it up about an inch in that center slash line. That way there's absolutely no way I can get that screwed up later. So now that I have these little circles marked and I can kind of see them, I don't know if you can with all the shimmeriness, I'm going to go ahead, pull my paper off, fold over where all those pleats are before I turn over and mark the other side of my fabric. So I'm doing this while I have the paper here because these marks are very, very difficult to see. I'm just going to put my little paper up there. So since I have this right here, I can say, okay, now I see it. Plus I can watch the arrows. So I can tell that these two dots get folded over 
to match up with these two dots here. And then I can just put a pin there. Okay, the same here. I can see that there's two dots and that they go that direction. And if I can do it this way, keeping the pattern handy and very close by, I can see my marks. If I take this pattern away, you know, there's a good chance I could sit here for half an hour trying to find these marks in there. But again, I can watch the arrow. So this one goes this way also. All right, so now that I have all of these little pleats pinned together, I'm gonna go ahead and take my tissue paper off and mark the other sleeve. Okay, so now I have both sleeves, pleats, pinned. So what I'm gonna do is just baste them and I'm just gonna use a light colored thread so it's easy to see and easy to remove and just use, you know, pretty decently wide basting stitches just to hold these in place. So I'm just gonna go straight down. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm gonna go over to hold that bottom fold the direction it needs to. And then this side does not, this side I have to go through that um, slash, so I'm just gonna take one back stitch and cut it off. And then I'm gonna go up here to the next one. Again, start up here. Um, at the point of the top circle. I can pull this pin out while I'm holding it and just baste it down. I'm going to do this to all of the pleats on both of the sleeves. All right, so I've got my pleats all basted on. And so up here is that dot at the top of my continuous lap. Here's my little slash I started. So I just drew that center slash line all the way up and I'm gonna draw the one from this outside edge that's about a quarter inch beyond it on this side, and the one over here that's about a quarter inch beyond it on this side. And I'm gonna switch the threads on my sewing machine to one that matches for all of this work because I do not want um, the blue thread to be showing. But what I'm gonna to need to do is run a row of stitching up this outside line. Okay, all the way up to the very top and then all the way back down again. I need to do that on both of my sleeves. All right, so I don't know if you can see, but I have it stitched up and back down. And now I'm gonna open up the rest of this slash line, not to be confused with base player. Okay, so I've got it not all the way up here, on focus. Okay, so I've got it sliced not quite all the way to where I have my reinforcement ending, but close enough for me and for this project. So that way I can open it up nice and flat this way. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one, and then I'm going to go to my ironing board and lightly steam this so I can remove my uh, heat erasable pen marks. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take my little piece number 10, continuous lap piece. And there's two of these guys, just grabbing one. And I'm gonna work with my right sides together. So I'm gonna open this up as flat as I can and get my continuous lap, put it right side down. And I'm just gonna start over here and stitch it with a half inch seam allowance. Now the way I'm gonna do it is I'm not actually gonna pin it. I'm just gonna start stitching here and work my way down. So here's my continuous lap piece. On this side, it's, um, if I start here and end here, you can see, well maybe you can't, let me move the camera down here, that in the center, it's not, the edge of this piece is not flush over there. You know, I'll make it a little bit closer. That's okay. As long as I'm stitching on this side of my reinforcement stitching, I'll be okay and it will hold it. So again, like I'm coming this way, I get to this point, raise my presser foot, move all this stuff over, put my presser foot back down and continue the rest of the way. Looking at it this way, with the sleeve on top and my little strip on the bottom, it's gonna be a lot easier to do than looking at it this way. 
Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. All right, so I'm going to be pushing the seam allowance towards the little strip. And the instructions wanted you to turn this under ahead of time. You know, I don't like to do that because you never know exactly how things are going to be lining up. What I am going to do, that the instructions do not say, is come in here and trim the seam allowance down pretty narrow. I'm going to be trimming it down to probably about an eighth of an inch. Just because this fabric is so thick that it's going to be trouble getting that continuous lap to lay nice and flat and be nice and small if my seam allowance is the full quarter inch. So, now that my seam allowance is much smaller. Again, laying it so the wrong side of my sleeve is up. I can turn the edge of my continuous lap strip under, turn this under, match it up to where my stitching line is, and stick a little pin there. Okay, and I'm just going to do that all the way across, turn this under, and bring it over here, and pin it in the middle here. So since I've got the middle and the edge, the part in between will just naturally fall where it wants to, and I am going to stick a pin there too. Once I have this all pinned down like this all the way across, I'm going to come back with a needle and thread and just slip stitch it down. So it'll be invisible from the right side, but nice and secure on the inside. All right, so good morning. It's actually been two days since I was last working on this. It got really busy yesterday. But before I finish up the sleeves, I wanted to show you what the dress looks like. On the dress form, I do have my stay in here uh, latched, but I got the dress as it is on here. I think the fit is really good. I think it being somewhat of a stretch knit helps round things out. It's not actually being stretched, it's just fitting nicely, but it seems to want to curve a little bit easier. So I just wanted to show that to you. The top um, little collar and button up here is looking really pretty, so I like that. Here you go. And remember, I do have side pockets, so that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera back over and finish my sleeves. All right, so I think last time you saw this, I was going to be whip stitching this continuous lap down. This is the inside of it here, so I've got that done. So from the outside, it looks like this. So what I need to do now is fold it so that those two sides meet. And up here at the top, I need to do something, but I'm just going to put a little clip down here. Oh dear, I'm snagged. Um, inch or so down so I can hold it in place. And at this point, just to make sure I've got everything good here, flip these both upside down so I have two opposite sleeves going on here. Now, at this point, with the continuous lap just sticking out like that. What I need to do is do some stitching. My pen here. Up here at the top in a diagonal, starting about here, coming down like that. It's not going to draw for me, but just a tiny little row of stitching like that on both sides. That's just going to hold this uh, together so that it'll want to behave when I get to the next step. Okay, so now that that is done, you can see by looking at their little picture here that you want what the side that's going to be folded under is going to be the side with all the pleats on it. The side that's sticking out is going to be the shorter side. Okay, so looking at my sleeve here, and it's the right side. You can tell because it's gray, so gray means right side. This is the right side. Here's my little continuous lap. It is sticking out on the shorter side. The longer side here, it is getting folded under. All right. So again, I'm just going to stick a little clip there for right now just to fold that side under to make sure I'm doing it correctly. And so again, on this side over here, the short one, it's sticking out. The longer or the uh, wider one with all the pleats 
is folded under, sticking a little clip there. So now that is good so that when these come together, this is going to come over that one, the longer one over the shorter one. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, just run a couple little stitches right here at the bottom just to hold this little piece under. And this is what that little diagonal stitch looks like that I just did just before this. So nothing too fancy. So let me go ahead and stitch these down. Okay, so now that that is done, what I need to do is sew up the seam going all the way down the sleeve here. So I'm just going to carefully match them together. Again, this uh, fabric, it's not the easiest in the world, but honestly, it's not as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. So that's good because I kind of like it. So I'm going to uh, match these up, pin it together, sew this at 5 8 7 inch. After that, stick my sleeve roll into the sleeve and press this seam allowance open. All right, so at this point, this is what my sleeve looks like. Sewed together, seam allowance is pressed open, and I'm going to turn it right side out. See what it looks like here. Looks very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and set these aside and get started working on my cuff pieces. Okay, so again, I'm just using my typical regular lightweight Pellon. Another option that I could have used on this is um, this knit interfacing. And it is, you know, fairly light also. Got a hair there. The only um, good thing about this is when you're working with a knit and you're using a knit interfacing, it does have some stretch to it. So if you fuse it on so that the stretch of the knit pairs up with the directional stretch of the fabric. In case your fabric stretches, your interfacing isn't going to want to pop off. Since this is a cuff and it should be stable and there should be no stretching in it, this is going to be fine. But if you're interfacing something on a knit that has the possibility of movement or slight give or stretch to it or something, um, you might want to use an interfacing kind of like this. So I just wanted to show you that. So what I need to do is go ahead and transfer my markings over onto my uh, cuff. So I need to go ahead and punch out my circles. I'm also going to punch out this X. That's where the button is going to go. And over here where the buttonhole is, I punch out the beginning and end of the buttonhole so I can draw a little mark connecting them. All right, so I'm not sure if you can see it, but what I am doing is on my pattern, there's one side that has a notch and one side that doesn't. I'm mostly concerned with marking the side with a notch. That's the side I'm going to be sewing on. And there is a circle and a square and a circle. So just to keep them straight, I put my mark, but then I circled it or squared it or circled it just so I know what's going on. And for my buttonhole, I just put my two dots in a line. I probably won't be able to see this when I'm marking my buttonhole, but it's just a good reference for me at this point to make sure that I'm actually putting the side with the buttonhole on the side of the sleeve where that buttonhole should be, if that makes sense. So let me go ahead and get my sleeve and we'll match these up. Okay, so I am looking at this and this cuff placement is going to be a little bit different than a standard one. And um, one side is going to be sticking out farther than the other and it's going to kind of overlap that way. So that's interesting. So what these circles here are marking is the very edge of the openings of the cuff. Okay, so the side that here has the continuous lap folded under, it's the longer side with all the pleats, that is going to match up with the side with the buttonhole. Okay, so this circle here is going to line up with the very edge of my fabric. So if I stick a pin through that and lay the pin up against the edge right here, that's where it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that right there to hold it in place. Now the instructions are going to want you to fold this under and press it ahead of time. You can if you want to. I am not going to. I like to do that after the fact. This square is a designation mark that tells you where your side seam is. So let me find, or your seam, this one here that we pressed open. That matches up with this square. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I stick a pin through the square and through that seam, 
that is where that one should line up. Okay, so tuck that in place. And over here, this circle, which is, you know, about an inch and a half in, that's going to line up with the other side of the fabric. So on this side over here, where the continuous lap is sticking out, if I put that pin up against the side of that, like that, that's where this side matches up. Okay, so now that I have that, I can just kind of ease in the rest of it, put some pins there, and I'm going to come back and stitch straight across here. Let's see if they give us a seam allowance to use. They don't, so it's just a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once I get it pinned straight across the bottom of both of the cuffs. Okay, so at this point I have my little cuff sewn on, you know, nicely. Now, like I said, the instructions want you to turn this up and press it ahead of time. And they want you to turn it up to 5 8 of an inch and then trim it down. I'm not going to be doing all of that right now, but just to make it so I don't have a whole lot of bulk to deal with later, what I'm going to do is come back and just at the very edge, pink off the very edge of my fabric. Okay, so keeping my pattern piece handy here, because I trim this and I want to make sure I make my fold at exactly the right place, and this fold line here is exactly halfway between each side, I'm just going to put a little line right there and over here. And honestly, I could have done this while I was marking everything else. I just did not think about it at that point. Okay, so I have those two little lines on each side marked. All right. So now that's going to tell me where my fold line needs to be so I can pinch it up there. And you know what? I am going to stick a clip up there just to make sure it holds to the proper place while I'm doing other things. So now that that is my fold on the top, folding my cuff right sides together, where this dot is down here should be on the point that I need to fold it up. But just to make sure, you know, we double mark and everything. I'm going to fold that up so it looks like this on the sides. Put a little pin right here. Now I can tell right now there's a way, way lot of bulk right here with all of this stuff. So I'm actually going to trim some of this out before I stitch this on. So I'm just going to come in here and clip off some of that. That's the bottom of that continuous lap piece. Lots and lots of bulk there. So with it like this, I'm going to do the same thing over here. This whole bottom should be coming over and like this. Now this part here is going to remain open, but this part I need to make sure I stitch closed. So I'm matching up the bottoms like that. Okay, so now on both sides, on this side and the other, I'm going to come down here, do a uh, stitching at 5 8 inch seam allowance here and on this side. On this side I want to make sure that my stitching, here is my continuous lap and it looks like it's moved just a bit so it's not going to be exactly 5 8 but I can eyeball it and make sure that my stitching is just on the outside. Maybe like between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch farther than where this ends. Okay, because this is so thick, I want that extra space to be able to wrap it around. So my row of stitching on this side is actually going to be probably closer to a quarter inch seam allowance. That's okay. Like that. This side, you know, there's nothing interfering, so I can do the whole five-eighths of an inch. Okay, so on my shorter side here, um, I'm actually, I have clipped down to within about a quarter inch of this bottom line here, my continuous lap, because that was very thick. So on this side, I'm not clipping that because it's in far enough, plus it's a single. Over there, it was folded in on itself. This is the one that's out flat, so I'm not going to be trimming this one. And I'm also not really going to be trimming the corner up here because 
that's not a lot of bulk and it might give enough thickness inside that corner to get a nice defined corner so that's fine i am going to trim a little bit off of this corner down here like this to cut off some bulk there and just a little bit here i don't want to go all the way to the seam because then you have a more of a chance of things poking out so now with my sleeve inside out here i can just flip this over on itself and I'm just going to start very carefully pinning it down here at the seam line down like that come on all right so here's the one seam line okay I got a little thread sticking out there I'll just clip that later and then again over here just flipping that right side out and making sure that my seam here is on the very outside edge so i'm going to stick a pin in there and just kind of tug it out and then put a pin over here and then just continue on uh, turning under that little pinked edge putting it down just out that seam line and pinning it in and i'm going to do that all the way across this one I already pinned so it looks like this when I'm all done I'm going to come back with my matching thread and needle and just whip stitch this in all the way across here to make it nice and neat so that the stitches are not visible on the outside edge okay so I have it all stitched in now on the instructions what they wanted you to do is top stitch it across here and the reason I chose to whip stitch it instead is um, there is no top stitching anywhere else on this pattern. And so to keep in the whole spirit of it all, I thought that whip stitching would do well. And I kind of like the look of it on this fabric this way instead of a line of stitching. So that's why I did what I did. You can do whatever you feel like. Um, so to press my cuff again because I'm not really pressing this side of the fabric I'm just wrapping pieces of my cuff around my seam roll hovering and steaming and then pressing it down with my hand just to kind of set it in there and then I can turn it over and do the next the next little part here and again just hovering and steaming once I get all this done I'm going to come back and pull out all of those basting stitches that are on my pleats I do not need those anymore they have served their purpose very well and now I need to go and find a couple buttons that are going to work for these cuffs probably something rhinestone ish since I have that other big rhinestone button on the back okay so it's done and the way it's going to work is this one with the extra little lap is going to go underneath and the other piece is going to go on top and it's going to look like that i have a little baggie of random old rhinestone buttons and i have a couple that are not see some of them are very old very old and need to be cleaned this one is a lot closer to this one's a lot closer to the style of the one on the back with the little the way the little petals are that are holding it in this is more like a little jewel type button but you know it'll work it'll work for me actually no change my mind okay so I'm going to use these two I need to clean this one up because it's very dirty as you can see and uh, so I'm going to run that through my jewelry cleaner too just to try to do something with that but both of these have the same little petal type design huh, that should hold that stone in really nicely and once I clean them up I think it'll be good so they'll be on opposite sleeves no one's going to put them right next to each other to say oh I see one is a shinier fab metal than the other and just to show you what I'm doing I'm actually making them both silver so I have this little gilding wax so that they will both be a silver colored metal like this with a rhinestone top so now that is one and that is the other one 
you know, they're a lot closer than they were before. And this stuff lasts very well. I don't think that I'm going to be washing this dress a whole lot, you know, it's more of a special occasion. But if it does come off eventually, that's okay. Won't bother me one bit. But anyway, just so you can see what I'm doing, that's what I'm using. I have no idea how it'll work out in the washing machine, but it's good for me for right now. So I'm going to go wash my hands real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my basting threads pulled out. Now I need to mark where I need my um, buttonhole to go. So if I take one of my buttons here and just set it, wants to roll away because it's very round. Set it right about in the middle here. Okay. I'm going to get my little pen because my button is a different size than what they call for. Um, if I put it in the middle and I just draw it, that's where my two edges are. Now I can tell that's about half inch. I'm actually, I think, going to go five eighths of an inch just because this button is so fat. It's so fat, I'm going to want that extra width just to be able to pop it through there. So with my button holder, I need a beginning point and a track. So if my track goes down here, and this is my starting point, that's how I'm going to set my buttonholes. It's about halfway in my, this, this cuff looks about two inches. It's about an inch on each side of it there. So I'm going to go ahead back over to my machine, pop my buttonholer back on, and make a buttonhole on each side. Okay, and now I'm just going to get my buttonholer going here. Now my buttonhole is a little bit longer than the button itself, but like I said, I want it that way so that um, I have extra thickness that I can pull through. So, oh, come on, I think you can see it better on the wrong side. Here is my buttonhole, nice little oval buttonhole. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it open and sew my button on into a place where that will line up really nicely. So I've got my little block here of mini uses. Got it up on its side where I'm going to use it to be the backing for me cutting this straight through here. I am slicing it in the middle and then I'm going to try my button. Um, and if this works, great. And it did work. So basically I'm leaving the edges unsliced, if that makes sense. Um, but just slicing the middle open. I wanted to do that because in case I needed more room, I had more room to, to cut it, but having a buttonhole that's too small to start with can be a real pain if you need to go back and make them bigger. So this is a better option for me for right now. So now that I know that that is going to fit, if I lay my sleeve down nicely, put again this one with the underlap down. Put this on top of it so that my folded edges of my continuous lap match up really well. Everything then I can with my pen come over here to the farthest side that way of my cut open buttonhole and make a little circle. And that is where I'm going to sew my button. Right like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to my other sleeve and get my needle and thread, stitch these buttons on. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and put the sleeves on. You need to make sure you put the right sleeve on the right side here. So I just got this opened up. My zipper is my back. This is my front here. And I have it wrong side up. And I've got my sleeve right side out. And I'm gonna make sure that if I hold this up here, that my back side is over here, my front is over here. An easy way to tell is the front has one notch, the back has two notches, okay? So I know this is the right sleeve for this armhole. So I'm gonna tuck it underneath here and match up. You know what I didn't do? I did not run my gathering stitches up here at the top. Well, just pinning the bottom and the top, I can see there's enough 
here where the E stitches, the gathering stitches will make it a lot easier to set this in nice and flat. So go ahead and pop it off here, run back to my sewing machine, and on the sleeve there's a couple dots and between those two dots I'm going to run two rows of gathering stitches. It's not very big but just enough to give a nice little sleeve cap. So let me go ahead and do that. Thankfully, you know, these sleeves are small. It won't take much time and I'll be right back. Okie dokie. So here is my armhole. This is the back. This is the front. Here's my sleeve and I now have two rows of gathering stitches here between the two dots. So what I'm going to do is before I even get started putting it in, I'm going to tug the two bobbin threads um, and just kind of work them up to get that sleeve cap shaped. And pull them on this side here. So many threads, so many threads. Okay. So here's my two bobbin threads on this side. I'm going to tug those and work that up. So now if I stick my hand in here, you can see it's a much better shape of a sleeve cap. And I can adjust these as I'm setting it in. So laying it down so that my back over here matches up with the back on this sleeve. So I know it's the right one. And set it underneath, match up my uh, underarm seam first, pin both sides of it so my seam allowances are going to get pinned open. That way they will want to behave correctly as I sew it. And up here on the top, find that little notch that I cut for my center top. It is right here. Okay, let me push some of these E stitches down out of the way. Match that up with my center top. And again, I'm going to pin on both sides of it to hold down the seam allowances on both sides because I really want to try to keep those, keep those nice and flat as I sew it. Okay. So, um, Again, I do not have a free arm machine. Well, I have one, but I'm, I don't like typically use it. Um, so what I do is I sew my sleeves on a flatbed machine and I'm going to show you how I place it. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is my center bottom here and I usually start stitching over towards one of the notches, you know, a couple inches ahead of it. And I like to look at it so that I'm looking at the sleeve part so that the part that is up against the presser foot is going to have the gathers on it. So when I get to this area, I can pay attention to that. So I am just going to get started sewing this, but by doing it this way, I can just kind of rotate my sleeve like this as I go and still have a nice flat place to work. And I can just take one little pin off at a time work through it and I tend to just hang on, not blast through it too fast because I really want to make sure as I go that everything is good underneath. So we get up to there, get all of these threads out of the way here and try to pull it so my edges are somewhat level. Okay, so I'm going to get up here where all of this gathering is. And the reason I like to do it here with this part up is that if there's a chance for something to get wrinkled, it's going to be up here. And this way I can really pay attention and take it nice and slow and work it all out. So yeah, there probably will be one or two little little wrinkles, but that's okay. I just don't want anything to get like caught sideways like that or something. And that's what doing it while I'm looking at it upwards this way will help. Okay, so now that I've gotten all the way around once, I'm going to lift up my presser foot, move it out. So that row of stitching is along the outside edge of my presser foot. I'm going to do another row of stitches 
By doing it that way, that gives me a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to run a second row of stitching in here all the way around. And when I'm done, down at the bottom of my sleeve, I can come back and trim fairly close to that second row of stitching, and that's going to make it more comfortable while I'm wearing it. Alrighty, so back over here at my table, I'm just checking around to make sure my sleeve is good before I start trimming. That's important. You don't want to trim before you check. So down here at the bottom, what the instructions say is to trim it all the way around. I'm not going to. I'm just going to trim it down here at the bottom. So starting just above where the notch is. And then come down and trim it up to just above where the other notch is like that. I don't mind it having a bigger seam allowance up above here. Might give it a little more softness where that uh, sleeve's gonna curl over. But down here, that's gonna reinforce everything and make it more comfortable with less on the underarm. Okay, so down here on the floor, I need to start getting this ready to hem. And I've got it on my dress form because it's a heavy skirt, it's knit, and it's cut on a bias. So I know going into it, this bottom is not gonna be perfectly level. Okay, and I have had this on my dress form for probably about 10 hours, so it's had a chance to kind of settle a little bit. So I'm going to use my hem marking stick here just to try to get everything evened out to begin with. So I'm looking for the highest place, and it's right about here. So I'm just going to lower this to the point where this little part where the notches are, there's little notches there where that lines up with the bottom or fairly close to and I think that's about it so at the bottom here there's a little gauge and it says that at this point is 13 and a half so you can see 13 and a half inches up off the ground is that point I don't know if that's the same as on me because I might have adjusted this so it's not exactly the same height that I am, but it's fairly close. So, I just put my fabric on top of it, clamp it closed, and stick a straight pin through. Okay, and that's going to mark where that point is. And then I can just keep going all the way around. And what that's going to do is give me a base point that I can trim so that I have a point where everything is nice and level to start with. So like over here, if you can see, I don't know if you can see, um, that same point, that 13 and a half inches off the ground, is actually a couple inches here, whereas here it was only maybe half an inch, you know, something like that. So I'm just going to continue around, putting my little pins on here, and then take my dress off the dress for and put it back on my table so I can trim it and get ready to hem the bottom. Okay, so back here at the table, you can see this is just a piece of my hem where I have my pins indicating where that level part would be. So I'm just going to get my scissors, come up here and get started. Just kind of pull pins off as I go and aim my way all the way around and hopefully when I'm done, I'll have a nice base point where I can then just fold up and sew my hem. Okay, so now strategy on hemming. This is a very full circular bottom edge skirt. And I think the way that I'm going to handle it is with horsehair braid. And uh, let's see, this is what I am using. It's one inch wide. Um, this was a waywalk.com purchase. And the way that I'm going to be sewing it on is horsehair, it's got some body to it, okay? And so my goal is that it's going to make the edge of the skirt more body instead of just hanging straight down, okay? And it flexes, like it can flex in like that, which makes it really handy when hemming something with a curved edge. So the way I'm going to do this is putting the band on the outside, my braid on the outside. I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to pin it ahead of time, I'm just going to kind of work it as I go. But on my sewing machine, I'm going to line up the edge of my braid with the edge of my fabric 
and sew it at about an eighth of an inch in with a straight stitch all the way around there, okay? And then when I am done with it, I should be able to curve it in like, and it'll look something like this, okay? But my first step is to just go ahead and stitch it on just with a straight stitch right here all the way around. Okay, so I've got it all sewn on, as you can see here. And so what I'm doing is just turning it under and for right now, just putting a little clip there. And I'm gonna probably do this like every 10 inches or so. So I'm gonna put one about here and put a clip. Now, I'm not pressing this edge. I actually want it to stay kind of like a soft curve down there at the edge. I think that that will be nice on the outside. But I have decided that I am going to sew this by machine all the way around here once I have it all clipped. Um, I am just not in the mood to hand stitch down this hem because it is huge. It's really huge. So as you can see, this horse hair, well, it's not real horse hair. It's nylon, but it's called horse hair. It does flex very nicely and mold to the shape I want very nicely so that then when I do come back and sew it, um, this edge will condense enough so that there won't be any puckers up here. And then from the outside, it'll look better. Let me uh, go ahead and finish clipping this and I'll sew it again with just a straight stitch. And I'm gonna be sewing it like right here, right along the edge of my, of my horsehair braid. And I think that it's far enough down it won't be terribly noticeable, and if it is, that's okay with me at this point. All right, so I wanna show you how it turned out. As you can see, I have volume now in my hem. So I just stitched it. I ran my uh, presser foot edge along the edge of my horsehair braid just as my guide. So that gave me about a quarter inch in is where I stitched it. And from the outside, I think it's gonna look really nice. It's gonna want to give this bottom edge more oomph to it. So let me pop it on to my dress form and show you how it turned out. Okay, so we got it all done and you know what, it's very comfortable. I can tell you that um, getting dressed and doing those hooks and eyes on that stay behind my back was a little bit tricky, but doable. Um, so here's my update. The sleeves with these big cuffs, you know, it's really pretty and really dramatic. If you want a really tight fitting cuff, this is not it. It's fairly loose, but that's okay. Gives it the drapey feel. Um, it's very comfortable, actually. I don't have any problem with feeling restricted or anything, which is good, you know. Um, I think that the hem moves the way that I wanted it to, so that's good. I put my hair up so that you could see that button and everything on the back. Remember, I had to lower that zipper 
just because the zipper that I had was too short. And I think that this worked out well. Actually, I think it's kind of pretty. And a uh, good part is since the neck line is so high and sometimes when you have a zipper that pokes really right up at the top, it kind of drills into the back of your neck or your head by lowering it. I don't have to worry about that. So that's a good thing, but I like it. There was a whole lot more steps to it than I thought there was going to be. But look, you can see, see if I can drop my microphone thing, how wide this skirt is. It's really wide. I feel like one of those toy dolls right now. But it's very comfortable, very festive. I hope you liked it and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bucolic life, free every city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arrive. This life pleases me, as it is plain to see, I'm living my bucolic life.